Okay, so the main objective of the uh, following presentation is to um, present the fundamental theorem, theorem of finite abelian groups. Uh, we'll look at some implications and we will um, look at the ideas involved in uh, uh, substantiating the results. So as a starting point, let us state the theorem. The theorem uh, can be stated as follows. Every finite abelian group is a direct product of cyclic groups of prime order, uh, of prime power order. Moreover, the number of terms in the product and the orders of the cyclic groups are uniquely determined by the group. So the, the main idea here is that abelian groups are built, finite abelian groups are built out of cyclic groups. Um, and the way you combine these cyclic groups is with direct product. And uh, since every cyclic group of order M is isomorphic to ZM, um, if G is a finite abelian group, then we can say that G is then um, isomorphic with a direct product of uh, cyclic group of uh, orders P1 power N1 all the way till P sub K power NK, where P1 through PK are some prime numbers. And these prime numbers may or may not be distinct. Now, this decomposition is a unique up to permutation of the factors occurring uh, here. And uh, the prime powers which are occurring in the decomposition are uniquely determined by your choice of G. And uh, this group here, ZP1, N1, direct product, all the way till Z, P, K, N, K, is called a representative of the isomorphism class of G. Let's consider an abelian group of order P, K, where let's say P is some prime number, and K is uh, any natural number in uh, uh, less than or equal to 4. Suppose that K is 1. So in that case, PK will be uh, just the prime number P, right, if K is 1. And this shows that then we know that there is only one uh, cyclic group of order P here. So whatever G is, it has to be isomorphic to ZP. So we only have one isomorphism type. But suppose now that K is 2. So that means that PK, we're assuming that PK is uh, a perfect square of some prime number, like 9 or, six of, uh, or, or 25. So then notice that we can write, if you think of 2, we can write 2 as, of course, 2. Or we can also write 2 as 1 plus 1. And um, so we can think of P square as being P square, which is, okay, clearly obvious. Or we can think of P square as being P uh, power 1 uh, plus 1. Okay, so why is this decomposition useful? That tells us that we have two non-isomorphic types. So either G will be isomorphic to ZP square, or G will be isomorphic to ZP, direct product ZP. Uh, suppose that K is 3. Now, notice that, of course, we can write 3 as 3, or we can write 3 as 2 plus 1, or we can write 3 as uh, uh, 1 plus 1 plus 1, right? And we're choosing our... Um, uh, add it to be in um, in non-increasing fashion. In or the order of the addends is non-increasing. So then uh, we should expect three isomorphisms 
isomorphism type. So we can write PK as P cube, right? Or we can write PK as P squared plus one, or we can write PK as P one plus one plus one. But in any case, so we have three non-isomorphic types. So that means that either G will be isomorphic to Z P cube, or G will be isomorphic to Z P square, direct product Z P, or G will be isomorphic to Z P, direct product Z P, direct product Z P. And that's pretty much all of it. We don't have any other non-isomorphic type. Okay, so suppose now that k is 4, so that p power k is p power 4, and then we'll rewrite uh, 4 as a sum where the addends are occurring in non-increasing fashion. So 4 is 4, of course, or we can have that 4 um, is uh, 3 plus 1, right? Or we can think of, uh, 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 of, we can think of 4 as being 2 plus 2, Right, or we can think of uh, 4 as being uh, 2 plus 1 plus 1, or we can think of 4 as being 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. So if you count the number of partitions that we have, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5. So we have five many ways of writing, distinct ways of writing 4 in non-increasing um, fashion where the addends are occurring in a non-increasing fashion. So, so then that tells us that we can think of P power 4 as P power 4, or P power 4 can be thought as this, or as this, right? Or as this, or as that. So then this shows that we have five non-isomorphic types. Z the cyclic group z power 4 or this direct product or this direct product or this direct product or a direct product of zp four times okay all right now let's look at um let's suppose that g is a finite abelian group of order 8. Since we can write 8 as 2 cubed, and then think of the possible decomposition of 3, right? We can think of 3, of course, as just being 3, or you can think of 3 as being 2 plus 1, or you can think of 3 as being 1 plus 1 plus 1. So we have three non-isomorphic type. Whatever this group is, it's either isomorphic to Z8, or is going to be isomorphic to z power 4 direct product z square, where the power 4 is given to us by 2 square, right? Or is going to be isomorphic to z2 direct product z2 direct product z2. Let's consider a finite group of order 72. Think of 72 as being 2 cubed times 3 square. This is the prime decomposition of 72. And now let's look at all possible partition of 3, right? So we can think of this 3 or 2 plus 1 or 1 plus 1 plus 1. What about all possible decomposition of 2? To um, 1 plus 1, right? So we have too many ways. So if you think of all possible uh, combinations that we can get to get the isomorphism class, if we take 3 and 2, then we'll have Z8 uh, direct product Z9. If we take uh, 3 and 1 plus 1, we'll have this type, right? Uh, if we take uh, 2 plus 1 and 2, we get this type, where this factor is really coming from the decomposition 2 plus 1, right? Or if we have 2 plus 1 and 1 plus 1, we'll have this type where the decomposition occurring here is coming from 2 plus 1, and this one here is coming from 1 plus 1. If we have, 
if we take this combination, then uh, we'll have this decomposition where this factor is coming from 1 plus 1 plus 1, and the last one is coming from uh, uh, 2. Right? So, and then finally, we have uh, this decomposition. Well, the, the, this, this here is coming from 1 plus 1 plus 1, and the last one is coming from 1 plus 1, right? So, and so we have, we expect, because we have six many ways of combining these, um, uh, uh, the, the, the element occurring in the partition, so we expect 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 many um, non-isomorphic types, right? Okay, so any group, any, any abelian, sorry, any finite abelian group of order 72, this is important, has to be abelian for, for this to work, can be written, can be, will be isomorphic to only one of these types, regardless of however this group is described. Whenever you have a finite abelian group, it has to be isomorphic to one of these, okay? So that really is the power behind the fundamental theorem, theorem of abelian groups. Okay, so, so let's consider this, let's look at this lemma. Let D be a finite abelian group of order Pn times M, where P is a prime number that does not divide M, then G is necessarily isomorphic to H direct product K, where H consists of all elements little g in the group, such that the power of uh, uh, G, power Pn is E, and K consists of all elements G, such that G power M is equal to E, and H is the order of Pn. All right, so let H and K be, uh, so, so the fact that H and K are subgroups, I will leave that as an exercise. And so please do pause the video and try to verify uh, this claim for yourself. Now to show that um, G is isomorphic to this direct product, we only need to show that G can be decomposed at H time K and we need to show that H time K um, is the trivial group containing E. Okay, so since the GCD of M and PN is 1, then we can rewrite, of course, 1 as RM plus SPN, where R and M are some integers, right? Now, so writing X as X power 1 gives us XRM plus S. Pn, which can be written as XRM time XSPn. Okay, now notice that if we take XRM power Pn, then this is X uh, Pn RM. Uh, we can put the M here. Time R, and since Pn time M is the order of the group, and uh, the order of X has to divide the order of the group, according to Lagrange theorem, this must be E. Similarly, X S power Pn power M is X Pn M time S, and again, this is the order of the group, and since the order of X has to divide the order of the group, according to Lagrange theorem, this must be E as well. So this tells us that uh, X by definition RM is an element of H and uh, X SPN is an element of K, right? So, so then every element can be written as every element in G can be written as HK since X was taken to be uh, X was taken arbitrarily. Moving forward, 
Suppose that you pick x in the intersection of h and k. Well, this shows that the order of x has to divide both, right? So, sorry, so since x power pn must be e and uh, x power m must also be e, then the order of x must divide both uh, p power n and lil m, right? Uh, however, since p is a prime number, it follows that um, the order of x has to be ones uh, because because okay, so so we're saying that essentially uh, the order of um, this element of the element x has to divide both p n and also has to divide uh, m. Okay, um, but p is a prime number, and we have assumed uh, that the order of um, p one second. We have assumed that uh, p is a prime number that does not divide m, right? So this shows that the order of x has to be equal to 1, and x must be the identity element. Now, uh, finally, if we look at x power n, uh, p power n times m, that's the order of g, which will be the order of hk. But the order of uh, hk is the order of h times the order of k over the order of the intersection of the group obtained by intersecting h and k. And then, uh, however, this group here has order 1. So this tells us that uh, this must be uh, equal to the order of h. The order of g is the order of h times the order of k. Uh, but since p does not divide the order of k, then uh, the order of h has to be equal to p power n. Okay, we'll uh, here present a sketch, an outline of the of a proof of the fundamental theorem of uh, finite abelian groups. Uh, so suppose that uh, G is a finite abelian group of order p one n one, p two and 2 and so on all the way till pk and k where p1 uh, p2 pk are prime numbers and uh, we will define gps as the set of all element x in the group g such that x power P, S, and S is the identity element, okay? Now, uh, by induction, if we appeal to the previous lemma, then we can uh, decompose G as uh, being isomorphic. We can say that G is isomorphic to um, the direct product G, P, 1, all the way till GPK, according to our previous result, which we have established. So to understand the structure of a finite abelian group, we really need to understand the structure of groups of prime powers. Uh, it comes down to, the, to uh, groups of prime powers. And uh, uh, a central component in proving the fundamental theorem of algebra is the following lemma. If you let G be an abelian group of prime power order, and let X be an element of maximum order, right? So you take all, so to, co to look at, to, to find X, what you do is, you look at the following set. You look at the set of all elements consist of uh, order of G, where G is a uh, big G, right? So what you're gonna get here is a set of uh, natural numbers, it's a subset of natural numbers which divides, containing elements dividing the order of G. And this set is going to be finite. And then inside this, you pick the maximum of this. You're going to get a number. Whatever number that is, call it, uh, I don't know, uh, little l, then little l has to be a power 
of uh, has to be a power of m, right? It has to be the the larger the largest um, such type. Now you now choose x in the group G, and you make sure that x has for order uh, p power m, where p power m is maximal. And we'll say that x is an element of maximum order in G, which is a group of prime power order. Then when that's the case, then G will be isomorphic to a direct product obtained by taking the group generated by x and some other subgroup k. This is a central component of the proof. And believing that we have established lemma 1, will you, we will uh, prove lemma 2, which says that a finite abelian group of prime power order is a direct product of uh, cyclic groups. So finally, suppose that G is a finite abelian group of prime power order. And suppose that we decompose G as follows. And we also decompose G in another different ways. In the first decomposition, we have M many factors. In the second, we have N many factors. And let's suppose that additionally, we order the, we arrange the order of the factors as they're presented here and also there, then uh, it would be necessarily the case that the number of factors occurring are the same, so m must be equal to n, and additionally, um, the order of each jth factor are also the same. So this essentially gives us the uniqueness in the decomposition uh, obtained. Okay, so let's consider um, the group uh, Z6, direct product Z6, and then we factor this group by the cyclic group generated by 2, 3. And we like to, uh, so this will be an abelian group, right? Um, and then what we want to do is uh, provide its isomorphism type. Now, Notice that we've seen previously that the order of uh, the element 2, 3 is actually the least common multiple of uh, the order of 2 and then the order of 3. Now, the order of 2 is going to be 6 over the GCD of 2 and 6, which is 6 over... Um, which is 3. And the order of 3 is going to be 6 over the GCD of 2 and uh, 6 also, right? Which will then be equal to uh, 6 over, sorry, 3 here, over 3, which is 2. So the order of the element generated by 2, 3 is the least common multiple of 3 and 2, and that will be 6. So whatever this group is, it will generate a group of order uh, 6. So, so then we are really, so we are saying that Z6, direct product Z6, mod out, which by the element generated by 2, 3, is um, an abelian group, is an abelian group of order 6, right? Uh, but um, notice that if we write the prime decomposition of 6, which is 2 times 3, because the power occurring are essentially 1 and 1, then there is only one partition for each, so there's only one isomorphic type. So this tells us that whatever this group is, it must be isomorphic with the cyclic group Z6. Okay, so 
summary is isomorphic to Z6. Let me classify. We want to classify all uh, finite abelian groups of uh, order thousand. And uh, we uh, to this end, we'll proceed as follows. First, we write the prime decomposition of thousand, which is two cube times uh, five cube. And then we think of, uh, so if we want to partition the exponents, so we have three and three, there are three, um, what else? We have two plus one, right? And then we'll have one plus one plus one, same here. Right, so that gives us uh, a total of three times three, nine many uh, possible non-isomorphic type. So we have nine possible non-isomorphic uh, classes. So the first one will be Z two cube direct product Z five cube. Um, and uh, the next one will be um, Z two cubed Z five square plus Z five. The next one will be Z two cubed. Uh, first product Z five cross Z five direct Z five. Oh, we could have Z two square Z two. Oh, we will have Z two square or we could have Okay, uh, finally, we will have C, uh, 2 cross C2 cross C2 cross Z5 cube, or we will have Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2 cross um, Z5 square cross Z5, or we'll have Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2 cross Z5 cross Z5 cross Z5. And we count. Uh, let's suppose, let G be a finite abelian group. And we'll assume that the order of G is uh, 1800. If we write the prime decomposition of 1800, we get two cubed, three square times five square. Please pause the video and check for yourself. Uh, so here we look at uh, for each prime powers, we have three of those, so we have three square. And then we have five square. Uh, so this is essentially P of uh, M. So here we need to look at the partitions of M. Uh, 
and here we'll look at the possible factors. Okay, so so here we'll either have three, right? Or you can, so we can have three, or we could have uh, two plus one, or we could have one plus one plus one. Here we'll have just two, or one plus one, and here we have two, or we could have one plus one also. Okay. Now, so the possibilities here are Z8, Z power 4, to power Z2, Z2, to power Z2, to power Z2, Z9, Z3, to power Z3. Z25 and Z5 direct product Z5. So all possible uh, combination of this, you start taking Z8 direct product, let's say Z9 direct product Z25. The next one will be Z8 direct product uh, Z5 product z5 and so on you keep taking you take all possible uh, combination of any of these three factors and that gives you a complete list of um, all abelian groups of order 1800 so in other words all abelian group of uh, order 1800 is precisely one of those one of these is a group obtained by taking a factor of one of these three and uh, no two of, of the groups uh, are, will be isomorphic. Okay? All right.